Hello, Nader here. Oh, welcome back to Path of Exile. We are playing in the Hardcore Breach League as a solo self-found necromancer. And today we are going to run a rare tower map. We have Elemental Equilibrium. Monsters fire two additional projectiles. Deal 68% extra damage as cold. And on top of the, that, the boss has extra life and deals increased damage. Of has an increased area of effect. Uh, given the fact that we are dealing with a souped up version of Cole, who actually does have area of effect abilities, that is going to be hilarious. So, let's get started on the tower. So, this is a, a multi part area. It's basically like we are ascending a tower. But the fact that we get multiple projectiles means the monster selection should have a, a bit of a bias to include monsters that actually fire projectiles, such as these Void Bearers, which will get a multiple flamethrower beams, and of course the Tapestries, who I might add actually seem to deal quite some damage to our minions. So, nah, that is going to be fun. I think for now, let's uh, deal with this uh, strongbox. Apprentice Cartographer's Sextant, which reminds me, I think I had another one. Might actually be useful to start using them while we are still running white maps. Ah, Spark Mages, they also technically shoot projectiles. So let's have a look. Four additional items with an additional socket. It ignites me when it activated and it explodes. So, double check which is the ignition fixing. That's the mana flask. So, that's okay. Take a step back and murder. A chest of goods ah. hides many challenges, but one goes. The plague more watches you with a glistening grin, waiting for a moment to send his shadow. Okay, cool. So apparently two different prophecies triggered from opening a single chest. We get a pinnacle tower shield. That's lionized, isn't it? Lionized remorse. Yes. So we're off to a good start. Very good start. Looks like we will have to make a quick loot drop off stop at the very first counter. Well. Don't hear me complaining about that. Nope, definitely not. Oh. Let's move on. So, previous episode we ran the primordial pool. And we were completely overwhelmed with loot as well. And one of the items that I looted from there is a new helmet. We have plus one to socketed minion gems as well as 28 to chaos resistance, bumping our old number up by a little bit. We lost some of our energy shield in the process, but we are now completely maxed out on chaos resistance, which is, well, it's a first for me, actually, getting maxed out chaos resistance on any character. But this has been a character of, of many firsts. And I hope we're gonna go for the personal first of hitting level 90 as well. Got a suspicion this is the exit up here. Yeah, okay. so then that means there's a, a number of rooms down there. The layout of the, of the tower is a little bit funny. If you're, if you're lucky, then you don't have to backtrack too much. In this case, though, we uh, did have to backtrack for what turned out to be a single room. I've run it a couple times now. I think this is my, my third time that I ran the map. I've, I'm picking on, up on some of the patterns, but not quite on all of them just yet. Because, well, you need more data points to conclusively draw a pattern rather than just a coincidence. 
But there are definitely multiple segments that behave almost as if you were climbing the stairs along a very large tower. And on the roof we will be waiting, uh, we will be uh, facing the maps version of Cole. Who usually is no slouch for this build. It's a bit different of course because we are not personally tanking him and therefore the fact that he hits really really hard does not impress us all that much because well if he hits very hard that means minus one zombie in the army boo freaking who right there's always more where that came from so we shall see if his increase in life and aoe radius is gonna help him in the final fight and of course the uh, addition of the of the chaos damage or if it doesn't really matter all that much. Let's see, there are more staircases over here. So that means we are once again going to have to backtrack. So uh, I ran this map before, as I usually do, as a blue one. And there I was rather lucky with having to basically not backtrack ever. But it seems like we are slightly less lucky with this uh, walkabout. We find the stairs before we find the rest of the level. Okay, we are losing zombies, so might as well start resummoning some zombies instead of the specters. Because of course that is one other strategy of uh, getting caustic clouds out. Yeah, those, uh, those things with their suppressing fire are also rather annoying when you have multiple projectiles. Because then you really get a lot of projectiles. Oop. Let's take a step back here, do some channeling, and then do some more zombie raising. And we get a spider forest map, which is the same result as previously, actually. It takes us up to two spider forest maps. But... Well, we can use all the tier 6 maps that we can find. Because we want to build up a healthy yellow mapping pool before we start actually running yellow maps. Okay. But once again, we start to lose zombies. So we switch to raising more zombies. And from the looks of it, most enemies have given up. But just switching between channeling and just manually raising zombies every once in a while definitely useful and it definitely helps to keep the army strong and large alternatively of course you lose the thing that that stands between you and a whole bunch of angry angry mobs that just munch down on a bunch of zombies themselves are no slouches. Look at that. Augmented fireballs really, really are pretty strong. That is why rare maps are interesting to run. They tend to push the challenge level up a little bit further compared to regular blue maps. But blue maps are nice enough to just feel out how, how difficult a, a map's basic difficulty level is. So these days I, I don't run white maps anymore. I uh, really got tired of that because there's not a lot of difference between running a white map and a blue map. And at least while you are running low tier maps you know if there's no no meaningful difference between playing them and for one of them you actually unlock the map and for the other one you don't then it's just an exercise in sticking to arbitrary rules Right. 
We keep getting flanked from two sides. That is... We're getting attacked from two sides. From ahead and from the flank. That's why it's called flanked. Eventually they're gonna run out in one of two sides. Yeah, like that. Port in the army. Okay, these are simply just skeletons for a bit of a change. And have increased monster variety, right? No. Ah, there are still more of those phantoms. And a void bear. Ew. I think I told you to run away. No. Like that. Get back here. Okay, this looks like the stairs to the next area. Exactly. Good. No, but uh, level consisting of, of multiple steps, it's really difficult to get a feel for how far along you have progressed. Also, we need more zombies. But I think there is going to be one more area after this before the boss fight. So that was a little bit of an area to the north as well. I'm assuming that is the way forward. That this is just a, uh, a couple of rooms to the side. And it looks like that assumption is correct. So we can indeed push forward. Hey, primordial pull. We've done that one before. Nice tier 5. And that's one I do like to run. Okay, might actually be the last one as well. Just now that we're coming out into this, this big open area. Just around these, these bars into the depths. I think this is always the last one. Now, as with most of the maps we've been playing, this, the strategy is the same. Slow and steady. Wins the race. Well, makes you complete the race. It's not going to make you win the race. That only happens in fairy tales involving turtles and uh, hares. Or tortoises and hares, or tortoises and bunnies, or whatever it, it ends up being in your local translation, I suppose. We still have all of our minions, and I think this is also the last binding indeed. And then we get a staircase to the arena. This one is easy to overlook, I remember with a previous character I missed that there was a ladder here because it's not really strictly uh, well marked on the map and I actually backtracked looking for the way forward. So then there's going to be 8 more mobs and then uh, the boss. So we get some extra corpses here. And he really seems inanimate and immortal until we approach him. He, we can't even interact with him. And now he is awake. Carnage! So his increased AoE helps him with the ground slam. Also, I'm not sure if the, the chain attack is influenced by it. But as you see, it really doesn't help him. Carnage is dead. 
And with that, we have full cleared the yellow version of this map. Managed to uh, scrounge another unique, managed to pick up another yellow map. So I say this was a good run. So for now, I'm going to thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.